along with you for this video of a Russell's Viper extraction. So let's get into it. So this will be a, a kind of rapid fire of a few different ones. It looks a little chaotic because the camera is attached directly to the box that we put them in. Um, when we do the first step, or Jim does the first step, he's the only one who extracts, but the first step is to put them in this box with a soft mat on the bottom you can see and it's to be able to pin their head. This one's doing a strong be defensive behavior. I'm gonna be quiet for just a second so you can listen to the noise it's making. So it's huffing and puffing. Russell's vipers tend to do this as a defense. They make a loud sound. It also inflates their body to make it look bigger and that's a good way to deter predators. They actually have these enlarged nostrils. Their nostrils are very big on the inside. There are some other snakes that have this as a way to resonate that hissing sound really loud. And this one is keeping a very tight coil too. And you'll notice that the head of the snake is in the very middle, almost buried beneath its own coils as a way to protect it. But Jim, of course, needs to be able to grab their head to do that. So on to another one who behaves entirely differently. It doesn't put up any defensive behavior. It's much easier that way for the snake and the human. But of course the snake, it's not their fault. They don't know what's going on. They think this could be a predator uh, prey interaction because the human's a larger animal than them and is trying to restrain them. So that's why when we do extractions, we do this, but then we'll wait two weeks before we did it again. Because as you can see, the snakes are reacting defensively, so they do feel stress. They see this as a potential threat, and they're acting in ways that make sense to them. This one is crawling out of the box over and over, just trying to get away from him. These snakes aren't going to stand and fight. They'll try to protect themselves, and one of the best ways to do that is to Crawl away! So this one is doing that repeatedly. The venom that we collect is sent to um, a company that makes a diagnostic test, uh, one of the diagnostic tests used for lupus. Brussels Viper Venom has actually been in medical use for decades. Uh, back in the 1950s-ish, it was known as stipven, and it was actually used as a, like a way to, like a styptic. It helped with um, clotting. Uh, so there were advertisements for it as a way to um, clot up small wounds for things like tonsillectomies and such. Very interesting. It looks like this. Was he doing this? Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. Boy, Huber Heights has really changed since last time I was there. Yeah. So here's our last one. 
before switching to the regular view. So you kind of saw it from Snake's point of view almost. And then this is what's going on immediately before that. So Jim hooks the snake out of its enclosure into that box where the camera was posted. That one's doing some more hopping and puffing. He gets his hand in position and then he'll have it come to the funnel. And because the snake feels something touching their mouth, they feel threatened, so they bite down. Vipers and pit vipers have very long fangs, you can see, and they unfold from the roof of their mouth. So that's why we aren't using a film. Thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe for more KRZ videos, and don't forget to hit the bell so you know when it's happening. Follow us on social media at KY Reptile Zoo for more scaly content. Lastly, come visit us in Slade, Kentucky, and check out our website at kyreptilesu.com for merch and booking programs.